Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about Appalachian language. I've got someone with me today, my daughter Corey. Hey y'all. You may know Corey from the blog as Chatter. You may also know her because she's one half of the Presley Girls, so there's a lot of various ways that you may have seen her face before. But as soon as I started this channel, I started getting emails and comments from people who said, hey, are you ever going to go live? And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't think I could go live. That's just crazy talk, you know, because I, I watch a lot of other YouTubers and I'm always interested when they go live, but I just couldn't imagine what in the world would I talk about. But then the more I thought about it, I thought, well, I could talk about Appalachian language and people could, um, could comment the words they were interested in or words they were familiar with or they weren't familiar with and that kind of thing. So it starts a conversation. So if you're not familiar with going live on YouTube, so it just means that you go on live and people join your live video and then they can comment in real time. So as they're commenting, maybe if we were talking about Appalachian language and they said, hey, have you ever heard this word? Then I can, me and Corey or whoever's with me, can answer them back and we can have a, a virtual conversation basically. So if that's something you guys are interested in, we can talk more about that in another video or you can leave a comment on this video if you want to, if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing a live video and taking part in it and, and real time communication there about Appalachian language. But today, Corey and I, we have some of my favorite books with me today. This one is Southern Mountain Speech by Cratus D. Williams. It's, it's, I think you can pretty easily find it. It's an old book, but it's really fascinating. He, it's really all about language. And then in the very back, he has like a dictionary with different words, which is really cool. There's this one, Smoky Mountain Voices, a lexicon of Southern Appalachian speech by Farewell and Nichols. And it's really neat. It's just a dictionary. It's just got words. It doesn't really have any commentary or anything like that. But each word has has a lot of text with it and examples and that kind of thing. This one, Mountain Range, a dictionary of expressions from Appalachia to the Ozarks. So it's really interesting. It's by Robert Hendrickson. I like it a lot too. And again, it's just a dictionary. Yeah, but it's a, a good one if you can find it. My favorite one, the big one, <laughs> And I'm sure if you've watched my videos or read my blog post or seen anything I've talked about anywhere on, online, you've seen me talk about the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English. This one is out of print currently. I've had this one since way back when I first started The Blind Pig and the Acorn, like in 2008. My mother-in-law bought it for me. And even then, she, bought, she paid a, a pretty penny for it. It was expensive. But I use it constantly, so it's been well worth her money <laughs> that she spent on me. But good news is they're about to come out with a new one. Sometime in the spring, there'll be a new edition. So this one, if you do find it, because it's out of print, it's really, really expensive. I've seen them for over $1,000, so really pricey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, really pricey. But they're really good. There's so much documentation in them and so much um, commentary about the Appalachian language. It focuses on the Smoky Mountain region. This one does, but still, that's that kind of... Uh, if it's common in Western North Carolina and East Tennessee, it's kind of common in Tennessee, in Kentucky and West Virginia and on up too. So that's a really good one to have. So in the spirit of going live, even though we're not live, we're just going to randomly pick words from various books here. We'll probably start with the Dictionary of Smoky Mountain English, and then we'll talk about them. And then I hope that you'll leave a comment and tell us that if you're familiar with the word, if it's used in your area, maybe if it was used when you were a child, or hey, maybe it's still used today. Those are the ones I love that are still in use today. So Corey and I are just randomly going to gonna pick some. You want to start? Yeah. yeah. This is exciting, guys. Okay. This is a big book. I'll try to just find one and pick it. Oh, okay, this is kind of cute. This word is bus, B-U-S-S. -S. It's a verb and it means to kiss. So let's see what else it says. Woe to the daring swain who attempts a bus, unawares he is not prepared to be biffed one on the snoot. Oh, so that's, good. that's really good. So that one was from 1962, Mountain Speech, uh, Williams Mountain Speech. Uh, so, a bus is one that I've heard, I don't hear often, but it's like if you bus a baby, so you're, you're kissing it and cuddling with it and scrooching it up. 
But Biffed, is that one that you and Katie say? So, uh, Corey has a twin sister named Katie. Yeah. So, if we say Katie, that's who we're yeah. talking about. Our chitter on the Blind Pig and the Acorn. Yeah. So, or the other half of the Presley Girls. Right. <laughs> Interesting enough, Biffed actually is a word that Katie and I use. I read a book series one time, super, just real goofy, silly, but it was by an English author, and they used the word Biffed a lot. And what they meant mostly, the bit Biffed was referred to, they had a cat, and the cat would Biff something. So, if you imagine, mm -hmm. you know, you're playing with maybe a ball of yarn and the cat biffs it they're just hitting it swapping it mm -hmm. but um you could use that you know for other stuff if you were to biff someone biff probably mean your nose you're gonna punch smack them right yeah. so that reminds me Corey said england reminds me of another one uh let's see if we can find it is uh blare so if you blare your eyes at someone let's see maybe one more yeah well, it's got to be here close. Well, I would swear that it's in here. There's Maybe it's not. No, it's really not. So that's interesting. It's not in this one. But that's the one that I've wrote about on the Blind Pig and the Acorn before. Let's see if it's in any of these for you. Let me try a crab first. So if you blare your eyes at someone, your eyes get really big, like, and it's kind of here. Like, if I blared my eyes at Corey, what would you think I was meaning? You were mad at me. I, you better straighten up. Or right, I better or straighten up. Right. right. So one time I wrote about it on the uh, Blind Pig and the Acorn, and someone that reads my blog from England, he said they still use the word in certain areas there but it means to cry so it would mean like she blared her eyes out over her puppy that got killed or something like that that was really sad wasn't it? <laughs> I went there. That's but anyway okay. blared means uh in there over there means to cry let's see i didn't find it in that one let's look in, in these surely it'll be in one of them No, not in that one either. <laughs> it's not in this one either. Okay, so. Well, that will be one that we will really be interested in, you telling us if you're familiar with Blair, like in reference to your eyes. I didn't find it in that one either. Oh, you already looked. Okay, well, okay, we'll go on to the next one. Pick us another one for you. Oh, I like this one. Um, what about Frog Gig? Frog gig. So that's definitely something I always grew up hearing about. I've never been frog gigging myself, but frog gig, frog gig, it's a verb. It means to hunt frogs with a gig, which is usually like a stick, I think. Yeah. So 1972, um, I can never remember going in the smokehouse and not finding meat. Hams, wild meat of the forest, snapping turtle, hard-shelled frog legs, possum meat, rolled in flour, black pepper, and salt. We'd go frog gigging. So that was uh, 1972, the Hall Collection, Emirates Cove, Tennessee. So that's neat. And frog gigging, I, I think, is pretty fairly common all through the South. But right above it is an interesting one. It's frog eye gravy. So it says, same as red eye gravy. For, uh, 1940, for more Tennessee expressions, um, red gravy past the frog eye so they're just calling <laughs> that's just in a place where they called red eye gravy frog eye gravy but that's pretty neat i guess it still looks like an eye that's the point of red eye gravy okay let's go to where are we i feel like dana white we need a thing to to turn the wheel the next word okay let's see are you looking for one or no i'm letting you i'm oh, just turning the book for you okay. you can keep turning turn it to wherever you this want this is to. exciting i like this um Let's see, let's see, let's see. What about this page? I'm trying to pick one that I feel like is not as common. What about like a scalded dog? Means very, it's an adverb, it means very hastily. Let's see, that cat runs like a scalded dog. And that is from 1939, Hall, White Oak, North Carolina. Mm, the Hall Collection. Hall Collection. That's an, I've heard that one before. Uh, he took out of here like a scalded dog, just talking about run fast and, or something going hastily or fast away from you. So I've heard that one before. I don't know if Corey has. I don't know if I have or not. Something interesting though is under it, it says like a yellow dog, says with contempt, this in substance was the burden of the jilted one's original lament. By the time it was brooded about for a week, it was being indignantly told that this here uppity furrin woman 
I can't say that much. Just pointedly. Just pointedly ordered Doc Link out to the house like a yaller dog and said she wouldn't let him doctor a hot sick horse or a cow brute of her. Okay, you know, she was mad, wasn't she? She was mad. I like that, though, because we play a fiddle tune called Old Yellow Dog. Yeah, Old Yellow Dog come trotting through the meeting Come house. trotting through the meeting house, right. That's a good one. All right. I don't know. Turn. You do it. Let's go back here to the back and see what we got going on. Um... Okay, what about this one? What about Union Alls? Okay, that's a good one. So I think I wrote about that one. And there's, it's even uh, documented Brass in Brass Town. So he had on new Union Halls and they suited him. 1968, Brass Town. Um, let's see. So uh, anyway, Union Halls are just overall. Some people call them Union Halls. When I, I think I'm more familiar with Union Halls being uh, kind of like long underwear. That's what I thought Union Halls were. It does were. say long underwear. Oh, does it? The second mm -hmm. one, yeah, long underwear. Okay, yeah. Corey and Katie, when they were little, I always remember some of the cute outfits I liked. And they had a pair of um, Union Halls that were red Oshkosh that buttoned, you know, all the way up and had the little flap in the back. I always thought they were so <laughs> cute in them. Hey, I tell you what, folks, long underwear is a good thing to have. Keeps you warm in a This is a neat one. Uh, Mare's tail. That's a thin streak of white clouds in the sky. So 1931 calms. Um, what, uh, let's see. Judging from them, Mare's tails, it looks like warm weather. So that was a sign of warm weather, I guess. 1966, long trailing clouds high in the sky. And that was Spruce Pine, North Carolina, where that was documented. That's a neat one. Oh, yeah. All right. Turn us another. Let's go yeah. back towards the beginning. Okay. Um, I don't even know words on that one. Makes me wonder. Oh, we're back in. Oh, we're maybe we're no, back. No, we're not. Go. Let's see what is that long. So that's the entry for B. It goes on like B E. It goes on like two, two pages, pages, basically all the different usages. What so about that's really Batten? Neat. Oh yeah, I know what Batten is. A heavy piece of. Uh, oh no, it says a heavy piece of wood. Nailed over a crack between boards. No, I was thinking of batting. I was thinking of batting like you would put a quilt. Oh, put in okay. A quilt. Yeah. Interesting. Different one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Trying to find one. Here's a, a, a neat one. A lot of times words in Appalachia, they're just the same words, but we put a different emphasis or we add letters or whatever. So barefoot, but we say barefooted. I always say barefooted. I don't think I ever say I say uh, I'm barefooted. I can't go out there. Or it's too yeah. early to go barefooted. Or Granny yeah. would say, don't go barefooted. You're going to catch a cold. She told me that all the time. Yeah, as a so kid. barefooted is a good one. Uh, here's a, a, right under it's a neat one, bark. So, of course, you know, dogs bark. But you also bark like if you hit your, um, you ever hit your shin on something and it hurts? Well, that's you barked your shin. It's like hurt, like a scrape or a, a hit on your shin or your elbow or something. That's a good one. Let's see. Here's a good one. Uh, backward. I was so backward when I was growing up, and I still am sometimes, even though here I am talking to people on YouTube. But uh, so backward means shy or bashful. So if you're backward, I was backward. I would hide behind. If somebody tried to talk to me when I was real little, I'd hide behind Pap's legs or behind Granny's dress tail. And I wonder, though, how common that is. Drop a comment below and let us know because backward is something I think I've heard all my life. And, you know, if you say that person was backward, you kind of know they were shy. Maybe they were a little bit like, oh, what's going on? Yeah. Here's a, a neat one, a straddle. So it just means straddling something. It says, having legs stretched across the top of, sitting or standing with one leg on each side of an object. But we put that A, a stra get a straddle of that and it'll be easier to reach. Yeah. And even reach is a good one. We won't go look it up. But so instead of hand, sometimes in Appalachia you hear people say, Corey, reach me that book. Yeah, you know? yeah. Reach me that apple. Granny says that a lot. Yeah, Granny says reach, yeah. Here's one, a hold. So if you take a hold of something, but see, we changed, we put the T on it. We like T's, like a crossed and once and all those, but a hold, it just means take a hold of something. Uh, here's a one Corey can identify with. 
the it's just another pronunciation that's different. Alcohol. You've heard Granny and Pat both say that. They said alcohol. 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 Yeah. They still Granny still says that. Pat's yeah. passed away, but alcohol. You'll hear older people say that, and sometimes younger people. He was drinking that alcohol, or go get me that rub and alcohol. I've yeah. got a cut. You know they want to. So that's a neat one. Or, back to see. the beginning. And then in a minute we'll let's go back in the back, and then we'll look in one of the other books and see. What is tooth jumper? So a tooth jumper is why we should all be very happy we have modern dentists. So in the old days, before there was dentist and you had a toothache, if you've ever had a bad toothache, I have, you'd do anything. you get so desperate, you'd want it out no matter what. So in those days, there was people who were known for being good tooth jumpers. So basically, as horrible as it sounds, they took a chisel or something and they, if you hit the tooth just right, it would jump out. It would come out in the person's mouth. So it was a, a method of pulling it, but somehow that was easier than actually just pulling it. Mm. So it says um, in the dictionary, Smoky Mountain <laughs> English, tooth jumper, tooth puller, a noun, an untrained dentist who uses a hammer and a nail to extract or cause a tooth to jump out. And then no 1961, way. Seaman, Arms of Mountain. Uh, um, Imagine going to a mountain tooth jumper who was armed with hammer and nail and kept a pair of home forged pliers handy. That would be bad. But in those days, if there and and sometimes it was isolation too. You didn't have you know the money or the wherewithal to get to a dentist. Pap told us told me a story about when he was he was probably about 12 years old and he had a, a toothache, a really bad toothache, and there just wasn't no dentist or no way to get him to a dentist or it was just harder in those days than it is today. And um, he lived here in this holler where we live. And uh, he might have been older than 12. But anyway, it was when he still lived here. Well, his grandmother and grandfather, they lived across the gap, in, uh, across Coleman Gap in Pine Log. So he told me one morning he woke up and that tooth was hurting him and he just slipped out of the house. And I, don't, I never thought to ask him, how did your mom and daddy know where you went? But anyway, he went across the mountain to see his grandpa and grandma. So his grandpa said, well, the only way to do it is to pull it, is you're going to have to pull it. It should get it to quit hurting. That's what's wrong with it. Well, he said, in those days, you know, today we have, I have a mirror literally in every room in my house, maybe not in the kitchen where we're at, but in the foyer, in the living room, in all the bedrooms, and in the bathrooms. I have, we have mirrors everywhere. But in those days, that they just didn't have mirrors like that. But there was one outside. He said it was propped up. Of course, they didn't have running water propped up at a place where they would wash their hands and wash their face and stuff. He said it was just a sliver. It was broke, but it was there. So he got, his grandpa got him the pliers and he got in front of that mirror and got a hold of it and started pulling as hard as he could trying to pull the tooth. And um, I think the grandpa maybe tried first and he just couldn't do it probably because he knew he's hurting him. But then Pat tried himself and he pulled till he passed out. He literally passed out and fell backwards. And uh, he said after that, his grandpa and grandma said, no matter what it takes, we're taking that boy to a dentist or to somebody that can pull that too. So they did. They got him uh, to a dentist. Uh, another funny dentist story. Skip ahead to Pap was the oldest and Uncle Henry was the youngest. When I was probably, I was probably five or six, I wasn't in, in actual school. Maybe I was in Head Start or something, and they had a program where they would take you to get your teeth fixed. And so they were going to take me, and I remember I was, I remember the dentist was Dr. Dickey, and he was very nice and all that. Um, he was by Sweet Tooth in mm. Murphy. But anyway, Mama Marie, Pap's mother and Henry's mother, she told me, was telling me to be good and to let them fix my teeth and not to be like Uncle Henry because she said one time we took him to the dentist and we got out one side of the car waiting for him to get out of the other side of the car and he locked all the doors and he wouldn't get out. Uh -oh. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that's just funny. Okay, let's get back to the, to the, uh, I'm going down squirrel trail here. Let's see, or let's go all the way back and then we'll get another one. Let's see. I don't know if there's any Z's. There, I think there is maybe one. Let's see. One or two. No? Oh. So yeah, there is. <laughs> uh, a zigger boo. That's the same as a G-Haw Wimmy Diddle. So that's a little thing you play with. A zigzag a fence is a worm fence. I don't know that. Zonies alive. And that's a mild no. oath. Zonies alive. Seems like I've heard somebody say that wow. one. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, a lot of times the ones that uh, is I've seen this one, Yuns, that's uh, a common when you hear people 
a lot of times people might make fun of us for saying that one. Yuns, that's like how we, or you all, those yeah. kind of things. I say yuns a lot. I say that yeah. all the time. Yeah, people. Um, and then your yarn, put an R in the yarn, you know, or I guess you're putting an N on the end is what you're doing, but that's another one that sometimes people make fun of us for. Those are ends. Yawn, that's a good one. So, um, if it's over yawn or over yan way, you'll hear people say, over yan way, look over yan way, or yonder or yander. Those are all different ones. Um, let's see. This is an interesting one. I've wrote about it before, and I've never heard anybody say it before, though, but yieldy. So it's talking about land. If a piece of land is yieldy, that means it produces a good garden or produces a good crop of whatever you're growing. There's a yan way. It's kind of familiar or similar to the what we were talking about. Let's see. There was one we skipped it, but you'd hear people. You've heard people say, "Oh, she was just an old widder woman." Mm -hmm. And they say instead of widow, it's widder with it. Widder, yeah. Uh, a hoop and a holler. So if you're just a uh, granny and paps is just a hoop and a holler from here. It means it's real close. That's a good one. All right, Corey. Oh, here's this is a good one. Uh, up scuttle. You know what an up scuttle is? Yeah, it means like a core. Yeah, so you and Kate, Cor Katie are often in up scuttles about stuff. Not often. I'm just kidding. When they were little, there was a lot of up scuttling or corling. Granny just calls it corling. Tell them to quit corling. Uh, Should we look in another? Book? Yeah, let's look in another. One. Which one? Let's see this one. So this is the Mountain Range, a dictionary of expressions from Appalachia to the Ozarks. It's this one. By, this is by Robert Hendrickson. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to flip to a page in here. This says cowcumber, a pronunciation of cucumber dating back to early English and still common among, among the hill folk. I don't think I've ever heard of cowcumber. Um, I have heard this one right under it, Creek and Holler Folks, another synonym for people who live in the mountains, Creek and Holler Folks. I like that one. That's cool. Um, dwindling, shrinking, wasting away due to poor health. I guess she'll keep on dwindling till she dies. That was mm. kind of sad. Yeah, Sorry. I've never heard that one. Um, what about Durgeon? An, an uncouth, unpolished, clumsy person. Most of the people around here have some manners, but he's a real Durgeon. The origin of the term is unknown. Huh, that's an interesting one. Um, let's see. The, oh, let's see. I thought I seen one I wanted. What is acorn cracker? An insulting, derogatory name for a mountaineer, suggesting one is so poor and uncouth he eats acorns. That's terrible. Ain't that's it? kind of bad. Yeah. Let's see if I can get one that's not so bad here. Yeah. Um, this is a neat one. Uh, read that one. Lasses. Mola so lasses. Molasses. And they have been some other fellers that made lasses that they thought was good too. So, so instead of a, saying molasses, just, just lasses. lasses. In this area, instead of la molasses or lasses, what people just say is syrup. It's just syrup. Some people might say sorghum syrup, but most people, Pap always just say, I bought some syrup today. You know, if he, he had a man, he would get a case of honey and a case of syrup. I mean, not, not the same man, two different men. But anyway, he would say, I bought some syrup. Okay, this one's pretty crazy. I have to read this one. Jumpy as a pregnant fox in a forest fire. Oh, God. Says very nervous, anxious, distraught. Yeah, you'd be distraught. That'd be terrible. Um, Jimmy Jawed said, said of someone with a prominent projecting lower jaw. Okay. That's a good one. that one either. Um, Hell's Banjo, an old oath from the Southern Appalachians. Hell's Banjo if I ain't lost my folding knife. That's oh, a good gosh. one. Oh, gosh. What about Henwood? Legend has it that the mountain tree, Henwood, also called Chittimwood, was the wood used to build Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Hissy fit. This is something I think a lot of people perhaps know. Something I've always definitely said. A hysterical fit thrown by a very disturbed and angry person. Hissy here may derive from hysterical, also heard as throw a hissy and pitch a hissy. Yeah, and also a conniption fit or just... She's having a conniption. Tell her to turn to calm down. So lots of different ones to describe having fits, for sure. That's a good one. 
we don't we can't do that this year because we didn't plant any potatoes but gravel to dig up potatoes from a row with one hand one's hands leaving the plants intact i think it's called That's gravel cool. too even if you just if you use a potato digger still you're graveling you're getting those early potatoes out um this is one fixing intending it means you're intending to do some i'm fixing to go there next week this is something that we use in our household i, I swear it seems like every day katie especially she'll say well i'm fixing to do this i'm yeah. fixing to go to town do you need anything that's another in my previous accent video that i talked about where we leave almost all those i and g words we leave the g off oh of. yeah yeah um Some of these, these are so good guys, you should get at least one of these books. They're pretty entertaining. Um, this is, see this one I can't even believe is in here. It's just deer meat, a synonym for venison in the Ozarks and elsewhere. I, I didn't even know what venison was, even though I'd eat deer meat. So deer meat's for sure much more common in okay. Appalachia than someone saying venison. Um, despise to, hate to, detest. I despise to leave these great smokies. I use that a lot. Like, mm. I despise to go to work. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Contrarious, an old English word meaning contrary. In the Southern Appalachian, still used today as it was in the day of Chaucer. Yeah, and contrary to oppose. I don't know about that one because I think if you're just, Corey, you're being contrary. Quit doing that. It's like yeah. if you're stubborn or unwilling to yield to something or just having a bad day being in a bad mood you're contrary cracklings pork or other meat of which the fat's been fried yeah mm -hmm. chickens today feathers tomorrow a saying among hill folk roughly equivalent to here today gone tomorrow or life is short that's I a good like one. that one chickens today feathers tomorrow that's pretty good city fired a person who has left the mountains to live in the cities yeah okay now let's look at southern mountain speech by Cradis d williams i really like this book i think in the back he's got sayings and he's got uh let's see he's got a, let's just look at some of these it says a word list from the mountains of kentucky and north carolina so a booger a demon with which to frighten children oh gosh. not to be confused with the devil or satan I think they're kind of interchangeable, uh, booger and boogeyman. Yeah. The same, like the devil's going to get you. Or I guess a booger could be just some big burly somebody coming after you. Um, let's see. Dido, do you know what a dido is? If you cut a dido, you have a fit. A dido can also be you turn, do a donut in your car, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you see. Yeah. So mully grubs, that's a good one. If you get the mully grubs, it means you're down and out. You're depressed. He's got the mully grubs. I wish someone would cheer him up. Sonker, a fruit cobbler. That sounds good. Yeah, I've heard of sonker before. Um, let's see. Torge, I say that one. Instead of toward, I say, I can't even say toward. Torge, torge. You know, torge Hayesville up there. That's where he lives. Let's see, and then here's the glossary of mountain speech. A side of means a lot of. A raisin means the process of growing up. If you get the all overs, you're nervous, or you get uh, the chills, or like you ever feel like, what is one of those sayings, a rabbit runs across your grave? Oh, yeah. But, you know. Let's see. You see any, Corey? Um. A bait, a bait of food, like he ate a big bait of fish and then he was sick for two or three days. So bait is like a big, uh, a large amount of food, of any kind of food. I ate a bait of black eyed peas and hog jowls on New Year's Day. That's one. Balk, the space between furrows in a cultivated field. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But it also can mean refuse to go, like if you balk at something. Yeah. Uh, Blue John is skim milk. Let's see. Biddies is chickens or chicks, little ones. Um, Bobble, a mistake. Yeah. Let's see. There's your bus again to kiss. Uh, call to name or remember. That's 
I don't know about that one. Let's see, it makes me think of one. Oh, I know one that makes me think of is some people say, I used to work with a sweet lady, and she'd say, like, if I said, did, did the supervisor tell you to do, or she was going to town or whatever, and she'd say, no, she never named it to me. So that's like to, the same kind of thing. To, uh, to call on, if you call on somebody, you're going courting. Courting's still common here. We mm -hmm. still say courting. Um, cat heads, biscuits. Clum, people, you'll hear some people, someone in this house, my husband, he says clum. He clumbed a tree instead of clum. Uh, a clutterment is just a junk, junked up place. If you cry calf rope, it means you give up. Somebody's like holding you down. You've mm -hmm. got to cry calf rope. It means you give up. There's the cow cum uh, cowcumber again, Corey, mm -hmm. in this one. A haint is a ghost. You'll hear that one often. Haul off to take strong action. He hauled off and knocked him down. Yeah. Your goozle, you know what your goozle is? Like yeah, your throat. your throat, yeah. Hippins for diapers. You don't hear that one no more though. Mm -mm. Uh, Should we look in this one? Yeah, you can look in it. I'll be looking and I'll finish this one out. Let's see. A pump knot. That was funny. One time I wrote about that and people weren't familiar with it. So a pump knot. I had a pump knot right here. I think it's gone. I raised up in the basement and went paying attention and, and hit something, hit my head on something. But a pump knot is just when you hit your head some way and you get a knot that raises up. That's a pump knot. Uh, purit. If you're purit, purit, you hear Granny say that when she'll say it about her little grandbaby. She'll say, look at her, she's so purit, and looking around, paying attention. It just means she's active and in good health. Let's see. A ruckus, that one's pretty common. That's just a altercation. A right smart means a, a good amount. Old scratch, you know who old scratch is? The devil? Yep, the devil. A sinking spell. It seems like I used to hear an old lady say that she had a sinking spell. That's like a fainting spell or dizziness. Another one for di for that same kind of feeling is wheat trembles. If you get the we get the wheat trembles in this house, it means usually you need to eat a bite of something and drink something, and then you'll feel better. Your blood sugars really just took a dive. But the wheat trembles. I've got two in here. Okay. Go right ahead. So plum but not like what you eat, P-O-U-M-B, means complete or full. Them hogs are plum pets. Yeah. Or a plum cur, of course. Ain't, can't follow a cold track. He just runs by side. Yeah. I like plum, too. Be like, I'm plum wore out. I'm, yeah. yeah. I use and this is Corey's reading out of the Smoky Mountain Voices, the lexicon of Southern Appalachian speech, and that's by Farewell and Nichols. Another one is Hellabaloo. That's a good one. Also, also is hullabaloo, but it says, um, well, you needn't make such a hullabaloo about it. Like, don't make such a big deal. Here's a good one. Wasper. So that just means wasp. I was literally an adult before I knew wasper was not a word. I was actually working with one of my cousins in, um, in a, a, I don't know, two or three counties from here in Haywood County. Anyway, and I said something about a wasper, and she said, you know that's not a word, don't you? And I said, yes, it is. And she said, no, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And finally, I didn't believe her until I looked in the dictionary, because I'd heard wasper my whole life. That's just what we called them, were waspers. But she's the one who had to tell me that no. But that's another example of uh, adding the word. So we were adding the R to the wasper. This one's interesting. It says gorm. If a house is in disorder, it's said to be all gorm or gommed up. I mm -hmm. use gommed up a lot. Yeah. Gobs, a lump or mass, especially a mouthful. Every morning I cough up just gobs of snuff. Oh gosh, that's bad. Here's one. Just These are sayings now, similes and metaphors. Uh, if I'd have been a copperhead, I could have bit him. I've not heard the copperhead part, but you know, if it'd been a snake, it would have bit me. That's really common. Hair black as a crow's wing, hair like love vines on a fence, hair thick as sheep's wool. When you get your hand in a bear's mouth, oh, that's, I've skipped down to another one. I was like, really? I gotta finish that one out though. When you get your hand in a bear's mouth, you better work easy until you get it out. Yeah, I guess so. Happy as a coon in a holler log. That I'd say is as long as a coon hunter is not trying to find him. Solid as the hills, that's a good one. 
rough as a gritter or rough as a cob. You hear rough as a cob a lot of times. Let's see. Thin as a whippoorwill. Thirsty as a dry goose. The tune the old cow died on, a devilish or badly played tune. You'll have to remember that. Yeah, so if you play a bad lick, you could say, well, that's the tune the old cow died on. Uh, trying to draw blood from a turnip. You've probably all heard that one. Warm as dishwater. I've heard weak as dishwater, too, talking about, like, uh, coffee. That's weak as dishwater. Or you're weak as dishwater. Sometimes it's a person feeling like that. I've got one like pulling teeth. Old man Proctor Adams will have a good big fire and by George it was like pulling teeth to come away from it. So saying, you know, ah, oh, I had to go to town and it was like pulling teeth. There were so many people, you know. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a pretty common one. It's like pulling teeth because pulling teeth are hard whether you're doing it with a nail and a <laughs> hammer or by a dentist. Hopefully you're at the dentist. Yeah, hopefully you're at the sake. dentist, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this, me and Corey rambling about all these words and phrases from Appalachia. If you did, please share it with your friends and neighbors. Please subscribe to our channel. And mostly we just hope you'll drop back by often as we celebrate Appalachia. And remember, be sure to let us know if you think a live video is something that you would enjoy.